Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time to take global stories, making headlines in our daily newspapers. And joining me to review this is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Okay. Welcome. We missed you last week, but yes, you're here today. <laughs> so thank you for gracing our screen. Anyways, we're going to go straight into the papers. And today we're starting with the Daily Trust. The major headline on this one says, Protests in Lagos, Oshun, Edo over hardship. And the writers here are Federal Government Labor Meeting Deadlocked. IG puts officers on red alert warns troublemakers. Begin food importation and now TUC tells the federal government. And um, so we're seeing all of this protest springing up. There was the other one in Mina um, about some weeks ago. And people are coming out to protest over the hardship in Nigeria. In fact, yesterday I went to a local market and people were just lamenting how, you know, everything is super expensive right now. People can barely feed. People can barely afford, you know, the basic amenities. Um, people can, there's no healthcare, there's no transportation, there is no power. People are just lamenting on the situation of the country. So there's the economy side, and then there's even the social side as well. But I want to get your thoughts on all of this. Um, the fact that these protests are happening in Lagos, Lagos that you would have thought would be, you know, the calmest place, um, but it's happening in Lagos, it's happening in Edo State, it's happening in Osho, it's happening in Niger. I want to get your thoughts on all of this. Besides, today is the day that uh, NLC said that we're going yeah. to start there strike or mm. something like that yes um, you know um, we don't ever learn and I love to when I saw those advisory or check or whichever way you want to call it uh, like the DSS the police and even the federal government warning uh, neighbors and warning and that's not to protest you cannot do that because let's even go to the Constitution Constitution I now the, uh, the 1999 Constitution uh, as amended gives every Nigerian the right to protest. It's a fundamental human right that has been enshrined the Constitution, which I cannot take up, cannot um, take away from anybody. In fact, that case has been settled by the Supreme Court. So you don't need the you need police permission, you don't need the DSS permission, you don't need anybody's permission to protest. In as much as it is peaceful, that is the word, in as much as it's peaceful. So it's peaceful, you have the right to protest. And protest is a, is a right enshrined um, in the Constitution, as I said. So, if there are any policy of government, if there's anything that I, Chris Kenyon, want, as an individual, I can pick up a placard. I start walking around the whole of the streets of Lagos, um, raising my placard that I'm not satisfied with certain policies of government, government or even an individual that I feel that I must have been trained on my right hands. And that is it. You cannot beat a child and say, you remember in those days when we are growing up, when you're your mother beat you and say, if I hear, if I hear, you know. <laughs> if I hear him. Yeah, if I hear him, if your mother will say, baby, baby. <laughs> they, they, they will say, make sure of it, make sure mm -hmm. of it. You know, you, you remember those days now, the mother will not, they'll be beating you. I say, I see you to put your, close your mouth with your hand. And you'll be just be, you know, the things that parents did to us when we were growing up, maybe small thing. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> so, but here you come to look at it. You cannot do that. You cannot. People are suffering. They are telling them not to not to protest over hardship. Why? You see people dying of hunger. Seven people died in Lagos struggling to just collect a, a ten kg or one kg of ten thousand naira rice um, from the customs, and that has been happening across the land. The last time I saw anything like near this was in nineteen eighty four. During when um, Buhari took over government in 1984, 83, 84, as it were. And uh, it was the days we used to, they used to call a single. That was the first time I had that word, a single essential commodity. Mm -hmm. But there is one across the land, as rightly mentioned, um, you don't need to go to a market. Even the nearest um, uh, seller on your, on your street, go and try to price some. Yesterday I was told that a one apple, apple, one apple is now uh, 500 naira. I yeah. couldn't believe it. Yeah. Five on smallest one. I'm, I'm sure you must have heard of that. Oh yes, so I app. got some over the oh. weekend. Exactly. Then the uh, noodles. Uh, the big pack is about eighteen thousand naira. Who is noodles? Not for the children and uh, uh, young, especially young ladies uh, like my sister. Who put <laughs> 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 okay, 
Wow. Yeah, he knows. Wow. He knows so we are bound to young people. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, You're taking a shade at me this morning, okay? Let's go. <laughs> you know, it's easiest, it's easiest meal to uh, to make. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it, it, it becomes a problem. A bag of rice is hitting 85,000 naira per bag. And I'm talking of that rice, you. If not talk of the condiments, mm. the making stew, the meat, the fish, yeah. the tomatoes, and all the rest. Then preparing soup. So we are saying people should not protest. No, people must protest, and that's only right. Yeah? Allow not allowing them to protest will lead to something more serious than that, mm. and that could be right. So, and you have seen that there are some countries that government have brought that we have brought that just over the price of bread, bread, mm. just bread. Go, go and Google it. So our government must be very careful when Nigerians are saying that they are dying of hunger. So but to, permit me to butt in here. Man. Permit me to butt in here. Um, there's a report that President Tinubu is looking at giving 15 million Nigerians um, 25,000 naira every month for the next three months. So that's about 75,000 naira. When I went to the market yesterday, bag of rice now goes for about 85 to 90,000 naira. In fact, so do you think maybe this is them doing something that might just help? But 25,000 naira a month for the next three months, mm-hmm. that is less than the amount of a bag of rice. So what's that even supposed let me, to do? Let me, let me even assume that it's true and that happens. After three months, what happens? Is that the end of hunger? Mm. After three months. Then the second one is that we never led. We saw what happened in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. We are still probing. I will not finish probing. We saw how money was recklessly spent. All this, I, I, I'm tired of talking about this issue of um, sharing and so called piloting or whatever they're talking about. When you say you want to give people 15,000, you want to give them 20,000. Without, in a country where you do, you are, people are not documented, there is no register. I remember the days of COVID. I was in the United States during that period. And, and the university, what the United States of America did was that they gave out $5,000 to every American. It hit their account. You see your paycheck. Because why? Why? Because they have the data of every single American up to the child that is being born today. But in Nigeria, what data do you have? Do you know, do you know, do you know how many people are carrying Nigerian passports? <laughs> Ask yourself. Most of the people that are um, um, that are using phone that are not Nigerian, and you say that the phone must be linked to me for you to link me um, to your phone. That means you are in Nigeria. How come so many people that are not Nigerians are also using phones? Most of them did not even register. So it is it is just money for the poor. Some people just want to share money and rest of them. That is not the solution. It's like living what they say you buy, it's like living headache and running after la pa, la pa. I hope you know what la pa, la pa is. <laughs> that that down draw for the yes now. Yeah. You are thinking that when you have headache. No, no, it won't work now. It will not work. Uh but the the 12, 12 um, million people you know by 25 <laughs> i was just trying to calculate twenty five thousand uh for one million people will just give you uh 25 billion mm. now times that by 12. no that's and, 15 million 15 yeah, million okay, so times that by 15 million <laughs> and see the amount of money that could have been mm-hmm. put into something Else. that would be yeah. general of general good to the people. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and then permit me to say this: How many people are in Nigeria? We have over two hundred million 200 people. Million. Mm-hmm. So how can you say you're only targeting fifteen million? What's even the percentage of that? So Someone only came out million to say, Nigerians would be able to. President Kadosu or somebody came out to say that the amount of people in Nigeria who have above 500,000 in their account yes. is less than 1%. Less than 5%. Less than 5%. And then when I did the and numbers, then, that was only about 10 million people in Nigeria. Yeah. So, so the rest, rest of, of the 200 people... The rest of the 190 or 200 million because we are more than 200. So mm-hmm. the, the rest of the 200 million do not have up to 500,000. And that's being generous. That's ridiculous. Because a lot of people don't have up to 300,000 in their bank account. And then you're saying that 15 million. Yes. The, the, the poverty uh, line is deep. You are saying 300. Mm-hmm. Did I hear you say 300? Now, what brought you? Well, Kadeko said 500,000. 500,000 naira in the account. Okay. okay. You are a rich man. No? Just call my name. <laughs> <laughs> Just call my name, Chris. <laughs> so you have 500,000 right now. You're a rich person. You're going okay. to. This is it's, it's a serious case. Mm. If, if you if you if you if you don't have a policy that can can be of general because if you go to let's say 
an institution and the people are not being paid in a company, for instance, the cleaners will suffer. Mm. The people themselves will suffer. But when there is money in the hands of the, everybody at the same time, you no, know, you don't even things, think there is things some... Flow. Things will flow. Things will flow, like I said. But now, 15 million that we will not even know, you know. Mm. In the words of Yamgo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not see that 15 million. Mm. Okay, so uh, this... Um, I will move into the Punch newspaper. Uh, 12 years after... Tilibu adopts the Orosanya report, merges agencies. The writers are Tilibu orders SGF panel to implement um, measures in 12 weeks. Minister rules out job losses. NDP, HC, Diaspora Commission, two orders move to Ministry of PTAD abolished. Okay, so um, this report was done in, was it 2010 or 2012, in the Jonathan era. There was a white paper that came out. Uh, we don't know how that implementation was done. It was not implemented. The Buhari administration also looked at the white paper, brought out their own white paper, and we didn't see much. Now Tinubu has come and everybody's applauding him that he has the boldness to say it should, at least some aspects of it should be implemented. But 12 weeks, that's what time they have to implement this to make sure all the relevant laws and everything is uh, um, are out of the way and then in 12 weeks time these things are going to be done what do you think about adopting this report finally and the method and time frame that we have yes uh, i will tell you for free that if there are two there are two things that i personally would never policies implementation that I, I think I will never work with but Jonathan will not put the main thing. If you have done some of those things in the past, then probably wouldn't have been where we are today. Uh, as it were, some of these some of the issues we are having today would have uh, been done and dusted. The first was the report of the national conference that was held under his watch. And so many recommendations were made. And good Lord Jonathan did not have the will to be able to sign up on that report and send it to National Assembly for adoption. That would have become, but by now, most of the issue we are talking about, Nigeria, the state police, the blah, 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 and all the uh, interventions, as well as restructuring that would have been done. If we have not done it, then we would have, at least we are taking about 70, 70 percent of those policies, that are taking those policies. We would have known where we are today. But as docile as it was, uh, um, you will see that we didn't have the he couldn't do that. He, be, he felt that probably he felt that he was coming, he coming in for a second time because that fortunately, as it were, he, he couldn't do it. He, 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 he didn't get elected. The second one is the Ronsayer report. He was the one that set up the committee to look at the implementation and look at possibility of looking at MDAs, MDGs, and the ministries and parasitas as it were and see where over, they overlap and see where we can be. Because when you look at ministries, how many were about ministries and parastatals and MDAs? Close to about 560. Some of them duplicated the same job. And I asked myself, what is the job of EFCC? What is the job of, um, uh, uh, what's the other word now? Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, uh, what's it now? Uh, the, the corrupt uh, ICPC. What is the job of uh, uh, SFIU? They are doing the same job. Why don't you? Don't enhance them, bring them together, and but, but Chris, Chris, just a moment, yes. Chris. Um, let me ask you simply: How is this going to actually cut costs? Because nobody's losing their job. So every the wage bill that was going into ICPC and EFCC will still go there. So how is it actually going to cut costs? Because another report in the Guardian said after bloated cabinet, Tinubu okay, so rational report major of MDAs. So we are still having a bloated cabinet that really takes the bulk of the money that we're talking mm -hmm. about. And then now we are applauding the measure of, of uh, parastatals or agencies that will still carry the same uh, cost. It will still carry the same salary structure, the same number, the number, of number of people and everything. So how is it going to cut cost? My, my brother, first thing first, you can be better assured that people lose their job, whether you like it or leave those, uh, these are these stories. By the time they manage most of these agencies, heads will go. And I'll tell you that for free. 
whether you like it or not. I think that government is just being economical, so I'm just trying to play the ostrich as far well as this issue is concerned. Heads we rule because most of those agencies are doing practically nothing. So when you are going to get FOA issue effort, then something must give. Some people will leave the system. Then let us even start with the issue of magic. Once that is done, then we can look at other then look at other issues. But for anybody who tells that nobody will lose his job, they say, oh boy, now lie. People are going to lose their jobs. Because when you go to most of these ministries and parasitists, go to Abuja. Or even in Lagos, most of the federal uh, federal pastors, um, people just sit and do nothing. They come to work at nine. By 11 o'clock, they've left and uh, go about going, going about their businesses. So as I said, it is I totally support this thing. There was a time that uh, Buhari wanted to do it, and he set up all sorts of committees, made up of, of the SLGF and the head of service and the rest of them, they continue certain all sorts, all sorts, and nothing came out of it. But I think it's the time, time for us to think. Yes, you're talking about overprotected government. I totally agree with you. But we have to start somewhere. We are dealing with the SLM, the pastators and agencies of government now. Imagine. Then we also look at the overprotected federal structure as it's where the executive, the legislative arm, and even the, the judiciary. So there is a gradual approach. This, as far as I'm concerned, this issue is so bad. It, 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 so, it, I, I don't even know what to say about it because if you take your time to eat, read that the 800 page report of Brazil, it addresses most of this issue. There are some agencies I have never heard of in my entire life. And you are asking yourself, what are these ones doing? Something crop and this, this one, the cassava and this, this one, and this and this. But you have a minister of agriculture. What, oh, excuse me, hello, what are we talking about? So I totally agree with this. If they can be able to implement it, give it 12 weeks to make this together. I hope that this will not be mentioned in the bottlenecks that will not government policies and pronouncement that after one week now, not will be heard about it. But I totally support that this Brazilian uh, report should be fully implemented to the data. I'm spoiled. Okay. We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stay on the Guardian. Um, there's, there's a small. There seems to be some noise yes. from your. your Is there like a Chris. fan or something? Now it has stopped. Okay. okay. So let's stay on go the. Ahead, go ahead. No okay. So let's stay on the Guardian. There's a small headline here that says Constitution Amendment refs prioritizes state police, women in governance. Others. So, um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tadji and Abbas, had talked about prioritizing some bills um, that had been put before now, and some of them are, you know, creating more seats, uh, more legislative seats for women, um, gender bills, state police, um, the autonomy of the local governments as well. What do you think about the reps, you know, having to bring this to bear again, and you know, see how it goes? Yes, um, there's nothing wrong in constitutional amendments. Every constitution across the globe gets amended once in a while. Uh, but even the, the, the constitution of the United States, as much as it's over 200 years, is still getting amended. So there's nothing wrong in uh, uh, amending constitution. So if there are areas that the legislative arm, um, that is their primary assignment, uh, their primary responsibility is to uh, in making laws for the land. But I will tell you that it is not as easy as we thought. Making laws based on the 1999 Constitution, it is not easy. I mean, amending rather, not laws. I mean, amending the Constitution, it is not easy. If you know the process through which this um, um, amendment has to go through, then you know that it's a very, very tough call. You remember the last assembly, how much they tried to amend some sections of the Constitution. But when it got to the, because after the both house, both the um, house, both the Senate and um, House of Representatives must have agreed on what needs to be amended. It has to be sent to the 36 state houses of assembly for their input, uh, for them to concur. At least two thirds of those state of us, uh, state houses of assembly must agree to that amendment. If they don't, then it becomes an issue. It will not get. So it, after that, they bring it back to the National Assembly for. Um, for both chambers to also now tidy each other. So it is always very, very difficult. The part of the problem that we had in the amendment of the local government uh, uh, bill or law as it were, is that most states, especially state governors, who are feeding fat 
on the allocations of local government refused to hold their state houses of assembly not to endorse that amendment. And that is the problem, part of the problem we're having. So um, anything that can be done to be able to, I personally at the point I said that the present constitution as we have it should, should totally do away with it and get another constitution. Because this constitution was not by Nigeria. So there's, although that beginning of that constitution said, we Nigerians. No, it wasn't we Nigerians. It was they, the military, they, the army, they, the, uh, the military in 1999, led by Abdul Salam and Abuaka, that imposed this 1999 constitution on Nigerians. So, um, so you, 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 you cannot see that it is, that is why we are not giving the total benefit of it. But if I go to a man in peace, oh, well, I'm good. But I still believe that most of the hurdles we are going to have, especially is it going to be in the state, where the, the governors will hold on to the state houses of assembly as if it's part of it's a department in their, in, in their governor's office. They determine who becomes the speaker of the house. They determine those who go to the house of assembly in the state as it were. Even though they go to the Senate and house of representatives are mostly de determined by the governors, they are the ones that pick them. Except for so one or two that have so much strong uh, uh, value or have uh, so much strength within their constituents, but the governor determines. So, uh, in our ability to be able to amend this, we also depend on the governor's ability, which is not of what is supposed to be, because the House of Assembly or National Assembly is supposed to be independent of the executive, and the executive is supposed to be independent of the judiciary. But what we have here is that certain people in government, especially within the executive, they will try to load themselves over and above. Um, you, see, you saw the debate that has been raised about the parliamentary system. Have you had anything about it again? <laughs> uh, well, we've been given 24 months uh, by Benjamin Kalu, the uh, Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. He said it will take 24 months and the Constitution, the new Constitution, will be ready. I don't know, uh, when he made that statement, I don't know how much engagement uh, they will have with the people who really are going to be we the people that will have inputs into that constitution. I don't know how comfortable you are, but we've been given 24 months. Do you think it's tenable? Do you think we can realize uh, that uh, ambition of having a new constitution in 24 months? Anything is possible. If we have the political way to do it, that is me. There is nothing in my language. There is something that is called impossible. I don't believe anything is impossible. A possibility is you ability, your ability to limit yourself in order to achieve certain goals. So, if they believe that they can be able to do it in 24, in 24 months, or oh, well and good, it can be done. But the fact remains, as I told you, it is not as, as easy as you think. There are processes that have to be passed. The 1999 Constitution has laid down rules on how it can be amended. Its own, that Constitution has laid down rules on how it can be. And I told you that part of that is that. Despite whatever the National Assembly, it goes beyond the National Assembly. Whatever recommendations they have, they still have to take it to 36 states of the Federation, the state houses of assembly. They must make their own input and they must approve. And it must be two third. You know what the third of 36 is? Must approve of it before it will not. So it is not that. Let me ask you one simple question. How is it that since 1996, the exit of um, the military? We have not been able to we have not been able to create one single state. Are you aware that all the states that are created in Nigeria we have military? Mm. Maybe you've not you've not taken that into consideration. Go and check it. From 1960 to date, all the states that have been created by created by the military, because by, by their own executive fiat, they can say, Abacha came, I say I'm creating nine states. I believe came, I'm creating six states, and that is what they take it to the federal uh, armed forces relay castle and is approved and says that. But I have mean, name one single um, civilian government that have been able to create a, 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 a state. Never. Because the process of creating a state is so cumbersome that it's almost impossible for any civilian government to do that. And that has been the issue. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we just... Um... I'm hopeful that, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about, you know, women and having a seat for women at the table. So Calm I'm hoping, down. No, no, no. no it's, this is not a feminism. Thing. Calm down. <laughs> but I'm hoping that, you know, all of these gender bills, the, the autonomy for the local government, because we've seen cases whereby people say, um, 
the, the, the state governors are the ones, you know, ruling the affairs of even the local government. And when we even talk about the state police, you've, you've heard things of people saying, oh, the state governors might just abuse power. So I'm hoping that they can, you know, create a constitution whereby, you know, it's favorable to everyone. So not just some sect of people who have their own political ambition. Um, it's for, you know, the masses, it's for Nigerians, it's for everyone. Um, uh, let me come in here. Let me come in. Okay. For women, I'm also the gender sensitive. I have two girls, lovely girls. And I know they joke with them. I have two girls, one boy. I know they joke with my girls. So when it comes to, and I have one sister as well. So when it comes to the issue of baby, it's very, something that's very passionate. Then I want to ask yourself, the 33% affirmation action, how well has it been implemented? I think we should start from there. Mm. There was this affirmation action by, by for women that in the national cabinet, we have 33%. At the state level, how many women are commissioners? Mm. How many women are in the Federal Executive Council? How many women are councillors? I think that is where it is. So, and most of them, I always say that the women should not wait to be given power. They should go for it. Mm. We have a situation where women wanted to contest as presidential candidates. How many of you women voted for them? Sarah Jubril was a classical example. She went, she wanted to become, I think, under PDP or whatever, whichever one. She only got one vote. There were women at that arena that voted. How many women voted? I always believe, and I say this with all sense of belief, that the problem of women are women themselves. Until women themselves come together and be able to see them. When you look at the voting, uh, the voting um, uh, numbers, women constitute a very, very high, almost about 50%, close to about 49%, or even about 51%, even more than men. That even women determine who becomes president, who becomes a, but how far have they gone to be able to, be able to make sure that they, they are all, they vote for their own? So I don't just sit down and just get a uh, woman want to be rubber stamp mm -hmm. and rubber fed and they don't do that. Yeah, um, they do. Mm -hmm. The prime minister of UK was a woman. Yeah. Um, uh, the vice was president of the United States well. was a woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 thank I, I, you. I, I, Please, thank you. Thank I you. agree. I agree. Most times it's on paper, but then we're not putting in the work. We're not seeing the actions. But At I'm least we have that... women crush Wednesday. Women crush <laughs> I'm hoping that we will start to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that we we'll start to see the changes in the actions. <laughs> I'm hoping that we start yeah. to see the changes in the yes. actions. But this is where we want to thank you. Thank you for coming in and having a great conversation mm, as usual. Thank you. You can be rest assured when it comes to women out there, I will support you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All thank, right. You, thank you so yeah. much. We've been speaking to Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. We'll go on a short break, look at the weather. When we return, we'll be taking our first hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>